this high. He has astronaut Charles Duke, 33-year-old Air Force major. He's a member of the Apollo All 10 ground support crew. Go. He's been an astronaut for three years. So you're hearing the voice of astronaut Duke and of uh, Stafford, sometimes Cernan in there. Uh, the voice reporting uh, the position of the spacecraft for us of the news media and you at home is Jack Riley. 350 miles downrange, 87 miles high now. First, get over, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, you got to, you got them all done, let's go. The next event is the outboard engines Guidance of these five. Looking real good at six minutes, 23 seconds. Nah, thanks, Doofy. Still there with you. Uh, you're looking good. We, you, we got your gimbal motors on and your trim looks good. That's just tracking. Just beautiful. They're still climbing at this point. Can Houston Mark, S4B to orbit capability. Just orbit, orbit, orbit. Apollo 10 now has the capability to get into orbit on the S-4B should the second stage uh, malfunction. In seven minutes, you're all go. We have nominal uh, level sense arm 8 plus 1, 5, S-2 cutoff 9 plus 1, 1. General level sense arm 9 plus 1, 1, S-2. Right. S-4B is the third stage. One of these J-2 engines, 225,000 pounds of thrust. Seven minutes, 14 seconds. Downrange now, 538 miles and 94 and a half nautical miles high. Coming up on inboard engine cutoff. Should come in about 10 seconds. Right, looking good here. Inboard shut down. Right on the inboard, Tom. We confirm it. How's the ride? That's the one engine in the center of the five engine cluster that is now cut off. You got four other engines. The Can't quadrant. use in eight minutes. Uh, you're looking good. How's the ride? Yeah, it's just fantastic, Charlie. Fantastic. Right. Next uh, operation is at uh, about another 45 seconds when the outboard engines Can cut off. Can mark the level sense arm? The level sense arm. And We're right down the ground track at 8 minutes 30 seconds, 755 miles downrange, 98 miles high. After those outboard engines cut off, the second stage is jettisoned. And then the third stage and the, the last stage is 21,499 feet per second. Going to uh, orbit. That's speed right, again. You're taking a status for staging now. Translates at about 13,000 miles an hour. You're a go for staging. Staging is the separation of the Mark, mode stage. Mode 4, Apollo 10, mode 4. Mode 4. Staging. Roger. Stafford confirming the separation the that you saw on the animation. Has initiated on the S4B stage, the third stage. Generally, lots of stuff out the window at staging. We're catching up and passing it now. Okay. Okay. Right. We confirm that. Looking great here. You're looking beautiful. was a critical point, the ignition of the third stage engine, one J2 engine, 225,000 pounds of thrust. It's a reignitable engine. 37 miles downrange, 102 miles high, and the velocity is 23,400 feet per second. That's about 16,000 miles per hour they're going now. 16,000 miles cut off for the Saturn uh, S4B stage, 11 minutes, 47 seconds. 4B cut off, uh, 11 plus 47. 11 plus 47. 
as you see there, uh, out over the Atlantic. They passed the Bermuda tracking station. They'll be picked up by the Canary Islands. miles now at 10 minutes, 44 seconds, 102 and a half miles high. The velocity, 24,280 feet per second. It's about 16,500 miles an hour. They get up to 17,400 miles an hour for their Earth orbital speed. Houston at 11, 10, you're looking good. Right. Uh, the guidance is beautiful. Right. This is the third space trip for Stafford and for Young, the second space trip for Cerner. Predicted cutoff now 11 minutes, 45 seconds. Cut off the third Seco. stage engine. Roger, Seco. Six. Roger. Stand by, Stan. Cut off of the engine. The main engine. Okay, uh, Houston, we show 102.6 by 101.1. Roger, one, we copy that. That's his orbital altitude. Uh, was 25, 565, minus 110 feet stop, and the 102.6. Right, we copy. Assertion. And Charlie, have them uh, take a look at our uh, evaporator. We're reading a high outlet temperature, and uh, we're all scale low on the steam pressure right now. Right, we agree. Stand by. A reading from there. Okay. Instruments, which uh, might indicate some minor problem. High evaporator temperature. I just what the significance of that would be uh, on the outlet of the evaporator would indicate that perhaps building up temperatures the within. Uh, uh, we'd like you to on the evaporator. We'd like you to close the primary back pressure valve and activate the secondary loop. Try to understand. Close the primary uh, back pressure valve and activate the secondary loop. Right, just for a little while. We'll give you the numbers. And we'll have uh, Vanguard uh, LOS at 1532 in a minute gap, and we we'll see you over the Canaries at 1629. Uh, Roger, and we have closed the isolation valve on CMRCS ring one. Two is still open. Roger. They're talking there of a communications gap. Uh, they lose uh, contact uh, as they pass between the uh, Bermuda and the Canary Island yeah, tracking Houston station. Houston, Saturn's in great shape. You're configured for orbit. Uh, we're all go. Uh, Roger, just looks beautiful. That was the capsule communicator, Charles Duke, saying and it looks... And uh, Houston, we confirm your orbit. The IU vector has you in a 103 by 100. Roger. We're talking about the orbital altitudes in statute miles. That actually would come to around 115 miles uh, of uh, in statute miles, rather than nautical miles. And it's right on the target, perhaps just a little bit high, but uh, not enough to cause any concern. The capsule communicator again, who said, uh, go, everything looks good, it was Charles Duke, and you heard Stafford say it was beautiful so far. They lose contact here for about a minute uh, until they come up over the Canary Island station on the far side of the Atlantic and their first pass around the Earth of the two that they will make before they go on the way toward the moon. It'll take them about... Uh, uh, 88 minutes to make their first orbit of the Earth. They'll be back over the Cape area here, in other words, 88 minutes after launch, which now was just 15 minutes ago. Uh, everything going well. They've got a little trouble with that evaporator, as you heard. Uh, and, uh, Houston, we want you to keep the uh, primary back pressure valve closed for about 15 minutes, and, uh, and then we'll uh, deactivate. Stand by. You got a beautiful example here of the combination, uh, the teamwork that is involved in one of these space flights. Every one of the systems, every one of the functions aboard that spacecraft, some 3,800 of them are monitored. Houston at uh, GET of 30, uh, we'd like you to uh, put the primary back pressure valve back in auto and uh, deactivate the secondary loop. Roger. 
Roger, understand you want, uh, at 3-0, you want to deactivate the secondary loop and go back to uh, the auto on the, uh, on the uh, primary boiler. A firm, Gene. That was Gene Cernan. Uh, we heard from him right at the first part of the launch, and now we hear from him again. He's the lunar module pilot, but he's also the engineer monitoring all the systems aboard the spacecraft, and uh, he's taking over that function. But this is giving you an idea of the We've teamwork. We've had LOS at the Vanguard. Be about a minute gap between uh, Vanguard and the Canary Islands station. Showing a liftoff time of 1249.00.70 Eastern Daylight Time. Seven seconds late, isn't that terrible? Almost on precise moment. 